All right. Look at this thing. It's so shiny. I feel like I just want to put a scratch in it. Just right there. Just a little scratch. No, no, it's very deceiving how it looks. It looks like that camera's in my face, but it isn't. <laughs> so, it's already recording, and we're off to go get a new machine. That's it. <clears throat> so, what did you get, Scott? 2019 650 XMR Outlander. An XMR. That's it. Everybody on the internet's gonna go, ah, oh, it's gonna break, it's gonna have all these problems, it's gonna... It's just a typical Can-Am, it's going to be broken. I don't know where they're getting all that because my experience is pretty good with the XMRs. It's one of the deciding factors for me. So I mean, even, I have, I'm a little confused because I've never had problems that everybody claims like rear diffs and stuff. I mean, it's going to happen eventually at some point, but uh, I personally have zero issues. Yep. I've never broken an axle. I mean, everyone knows how I ride them. Um, like I said, it, it's, it's gonna happen to everyone at some point, one way or another, but I'm not seeing all of these 300 mile horror stories like everybody else is talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and the XMR is nice because it's sort of a one and done deal. That was also part of the reason why I decided on the XMR. I mean, one and done is kind of a lie because you buy these bikes technically ready to ride and do whatever you want to do with them but then there's always these little improvements like you and I have already been talking about CV tech and Yoshimira and fuel corrections but uh, no we're gonna head down the road I live literally a hop skip and a jump from a Can-Am dealership and so it's not really that hard right now the trails are closed because of uh, winter time as far as the trail at I can literally take a trail from my house to the dealership and be there in maybe, I don't know, five minutes, eight minutes, something like that. Stop for gas along the way too? Yeah, stop for gas and a little bit. <clears throat> but those trails are closed because those are what they're using for the sleds right now. So hop down there and uh, go pick up your bike, spend all that money of yours. Yep. You'll get used to that. All sorts of upgrades. We'll have to go see uh, Dirty Life, which is actually apparently right near your parents' place. It is. So you go for a visit, and uh, Trevor can hook you up with all sorts of goodies. Kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. And there's that really nice uh, water buffalo store down there, too. I like water buffalo. Yeah. You got me hooked on that. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to stop in for sure. So as short as this conversation was, I'm just about to turn into uh, Pete's. We'll get hooked up on another uh, setup for the camera and we'll go see what they've got going on as far as delivery and go see your shiny new toy. I'm excited. You think they have it inside or outside already? It might be there right in the parking lot. I don't know. I imagine they'll have it outside. Probably. Yep, there it is. Already. Oh, At the loading ramp. <laughs> You're expecting us. That's All sure. right. Swing in here. We'll see what you got. Got some of my parts to fix my quad after the crash. You guys might remember that. Woo! Whoa! But now it's time to go check out the machine. Look at that. A 650 XMR. We'll load her up and uh, talk about it then Let's get some more warm. 
So Scott, got your machine. That we did. Load it up, take it for the short jaunt home. What'd you think sitting on it? First impressions, your two minute impression. Two minute impression. It's hard to say. Um, feels comfortable. Even I though see the seat it. was really cool. <laughs> you had some tire spin there. A little bit. Not bad for a first bike. I can't complain. You're gonna have to get used to the Can Am power. 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 I'm sure I'll manage. Oh yeah. It took me a little while. Look at this. I said before it is my first quad, so no experience. I figured 650 would be a good spot to start. Oh, 650 will be plenty, plenty, plenty. They say the 570s and the 650s are the only reliable Can Ams. Yeah. I can't speak for every Can Am because for whatever reason everyone's story is slightly different, but they they all have uh, different problems, different perks. You just got to find the one you like and deal with it. And I think you made a really good choice because you were looking at the Renegade XMR too. I did. I think the main decision for that was just the, the utility of the Outlander and partially the, the difference in price. It wasn't much difference, but... Yeah, you this. were worried about storage, you were worried about this and that, and uh, the Pure Sport Renegade, as good of a, of a bike that it is, kind of lacks some of those things that you were looking for. Yeah. So uh, I think, well, I mean, I'm really excited to see what this thing does this season. I'm just looking at it. <laughs> it's looking back at me. I think my nose is leaking. <clears throat> uh, still, what is it, like minus seven, minus eight? Pretty warm day in uh, Canada standards. We're getting close to the end of third winter, so getting there. The, Another month or so, yeah. maybe two. And then we can get to riding again. I don't mind riding in the winter, don't get me wrong, and there's obvious proof that I do, but Right now we've got way too much snow and on top of that we had a weird two, three days where it was like positive weather and it rained. And now we've got ridiculous amounts of ice and crust and stuff like that. And the only thing you're gonna do in that is break your bike. Like I have proof of cracked plastics and stuff from my tires just grabbing big chunks of ice and just dragging it through my fenders and tearing everything apart. So it's not quite worth it. No, not a new machine. We just passed Todd, the owner of uh, Pete Sales and Service, and he's uh, eyeballing your new bike that you bought from him. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. Small town, so we all know each other, especially when I go into Can-Am looking for replacement parts because I broke something. They, uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they know me pretty well. <clears throat> but uh, we'll get this bike tucked in with the rest of them and take a look at it. What do you think? Sounds good to me. All right, look at this thing, it's so shiny. I feel like I just want to put a scratch in it. Just right there, just a little scratch. It's never going to look like this ever again. Unfortunately. It's amazing looking. It just tells me how much I've abused my bike. <laughs> oh God, even the heat, like all of that, it's all on there. The stickers haven't come off from power washing. Okay, let's get this thing off of here. Man, that thing is nice looking. I love that yellow so much. Let's hear that stock pipe a little bit. 
<laughs> it's so quiet. Man, this thing's nice. So, Scott here is going to be joining the uh, team and riding with us this season. He, uh, he has been doing more research than I've seen anyone do when it comes to choosing a bike. And this is what he settled on. It is a 2019 650 XMR. And the biggest thing that I love about it is the short frame. One thing that I will be doing for my next build, I don't know if that'll be this year or next year, I'll do a, a short frame, uh, something similar to this. I think the short frame is definitely the way to go, especially with the Outlanders. And uh, this bike is very, very cool. So it does have Fox shocks, but they're not with piggybacks or anything like that. Um, the, you said the 19s, they widened it, eh? Apparently the Outlander was widened two inches. Two inches, so an in inch on each side. And uh, everything else looks identical to my bike. I know they made some minor, minor changes for 19. Another one being these steel ends, which they had the right mindset of changing these to steel, and that's fine, but they did some funny last minute welding jobs and stuff like that. Not overly keen on that design, but It'll be uh, way stronger than what my bike came with, regardless. Uh, he also got the winch uh, remote line, which is handy in a few scenarios. And uh, the 650 comes with the regular cluster. Um, what I can say about that is for people who have this and they want to change to my cluster, is honestly, it's not all that worth it like sure go ahead and do it if you really want to know a few things but i very rarely keep track of what's going on there other than some rpm things in certain ranges in certain scenarios but not overly worth it he also you don't get a rear bumper with this we're probably going to change that in the future at some point but uh i think i talked him into a few upgrades through dirty life there one thing uh, you're probably going to see out of this bike is definitely a cv tech Got to change the primary. Another one is a fuel tuner because it doesn't matter how many years goes by with these things, they still run lean. And uh, we might put either my Yoshi on it or an RJWC on it. So we'll see what happens in the future because uh, that exhaust is hilariously quiet and that's no fun. <laughs> Well, I guess there's performance too, but let's be honest, we're all giant children and we want loud, roaring exhausts. I love this color so, so much. Would you go for winch again? It's a super winch, eh? Yes. 2,500, I believe. I believe so. Yeah, for this bike, that's perfect. Um, everyone always wants to go for like 3,500s and 4Ks and stuff like that. That's more than enough. There's some pretty obvious little things that uh, I like to see and I'm definitely gonna convince Scott of doing. One of them is, uh, I've got my winter fair lead on right now, but is a bump stop from KFI and uh, probably a proper worn heavy duty hook, which I do have on there. And uh, I've got a couple bull rings for the back so there's a proper place to actually tow them out backwards from because we're gonna find places to get stuck scott's a new rider so uh he's gonna have some things to learn but he bought a very capable bike to start with so if you have any questions just comment down below and we'll answer them to the best of our ability and uh really excited to see what this bike does in the future so this uh it's gonna be here in my garage for probably the inevitable future, I would assume. And I don't have a problem with that at all. <laughs>